Okay, today uh, we're doing experiment E2, which involves measuring two of the most important properties of electrical circuits, voltage and current. Now to start off, we're going to measure voltage in a parallel circuit, which is one of the two common ways of connecting components in a circuit. I have three resistors here. They're an ordinary conductor. Uh, it just takes a little more voltage to cause a current to pass through them. Now to connect them in parallel, I uh, will connect all these ends together and I'll connect all these ends together. Now in a circuit we can normally treat these wires as if they are equipotentials. So that means when I hook this up to the power supply, everything on this side will be at one potential. Everything on this side will be at another potential. So this is our power source over here. I'm going to be using this plus 12 volt output as my positive connection. This is the common ground. So I'll connect the ground to the ground side of this circuit and I'll connect the plus 12 volts to the positive side of the circuit. Turn on the power supply. Now I'm going to be measuring voltage with this digital multimeter there are several inputs for it. This is the input for measuring voltage. So I'll put my red probe there and the black probe here in the common ground input. I turn this on. It comes on in the voltage setting. If you need to select the voltage, it's this button here and I'm going to select a fixed voltage range. I'm going to use this scale here where I'm measuring to the nearest hundredth of a volt. All right, now let's first measure the output from the power supply. It should nominally be 12 volts and I'm getting 11.98 so that's just what it should be. And I also want to measure the differences across each of the resistors in parallel. All right, 11.94, we've got a little voltage loss over one of the wires. 11.94 and 11.94. So, we know in parallel all the voltages were 11.94 volts, 11.98 on the source. They should all be the same. Sometimes these wires have a little bit of resistance and they aren't just exactly equal potentials. Okay, now, in order to measure current in the circuit, Current is completely different. Voltage is always a difference between two points. So you hold the probes in two hands and in order to measure the voltage, which is I times R for each of these resistors, we don't want to take any of the current away from the resistor. And when we put the voltmeter here, we give the current another path to follow. We don't want any of it to follow that path. And that means voltmeters have to be very high in resistance to do their job. And that means it's hard to hurt them. So you can go around the circuit sticking these things in anywhere you want. Now when it comes to measuring current, the situation is completely different. In order to measure current, number one, instead of Using this input, we're going to use this input down here, which is the one that says milliamps. 
So let's plug that in there. And we'll push the milliamps button. And again, I'll select the scale. It gives me two decimal places. Now, current is actual stuff flowing through these wires. And in order to measure how much of that stuff is flowing through the wires, you have to get the meter into the wire, which means if I wanted to know the current in this wire, I'd have to break that wire and put the meter in here in series. Current is a function of one point in the circuit. And if I put the meter in here and the meter has high resistance, it's going to change the whole circuit. So to measure current, the ammeter has to have very low resistance. And that means it's very easy to damage an ammeter. So the thing to remember about current is current is a function of a single point. So you always keep your ammeter probes in one hand. All right, now let's measure the current in this wire. Okay, I can get either at this end of the wire or this end of the wire. Let me measure the current going in this end of the wire. I break the circuit, I put the meter here, I complete the circuit, I'm getting about 20.74 milliamps going into this end of the wire. Now if I take a look at the other end, we hope the same amount that's going in that end will be coming out this end. So I get my ammeter across the gap and there's about 20.6, 20 20.73. 20.73 milliamps. So I'll record that. Now, I want to know the current in this wire. So that means I have to break the circuit again so that I have the end of this wire. All right, I'm going to take my meter and I'm going to complete the circuit again. I've got about 9.65 milliamps in this wire. In this wire here, I have about 3.96 milliamps. So what's happened to that current? Well, current comes in here, it goes out here, but it can also go through this resistor. So let's check and see how much is going through the resistor. Now for that, I have to break the circuit right next to the resistor. And to do that, if I do that, I get about 11.25 milliamps. Okay, so I had about 21 milliamps coming through here. I had about 10 milliamps going through this wire, and I've got about 11 milliamps going through this resistor. I can measure the current in this resistor again by breaking the circuit next to it. And I get about 5.7 milliamps there. <clears throat> the ammeter's protected by a fuse. And if you were ever to do something as silly as putting the ammeter across one of these resistors, that fuse is going to blow instantly. And your TA is going to be on you like white on bread. The other type of connection that you can make in a circuit is called a series connection. And instead of having the resistors arranged like this, connected down here and down here, like we did in the parallel circuit, we arrange the resistors like this. And we sort of string them together like a necklace. We take the positive output from our power supply. We go in one end of this one. 
we come out the other end and into this one. Then we come out the other end of that one and into this one. And then we complete the circuit back to the power source. Okay, now instead of having all of those pathways for current that we had in parallel circuit, we have only one pathway through the circuit. So the first thing we want to do here is once again measure voltage. And so make sure that I'm plugged into the voltage input. And I'll turn on the meter, select voltage, and again I'm going to select the two decimal point scale. Turn on the power source. All right, now the this circuit is very much like a one-dimensional version of the experiment you did in ES1. Uh, the wires are equipotentials. And so let's look at the absolute potential at different points in the circuit. I'll put my black probe here at ground and I'll measure the potential here at the output and that potential is about 11.98 volts. Now at the other end of this wire it's still 11.98 volts. I go across this first resistor the potential is now 9.89 .9 volts. At the other end of the wire it's the same. I go across this resistor now it's down to about 5.8 volts. At the other end of this wire, it's still the same potential. And I get over to here, and the reading is now zero. So this is the zero equipotential. This wire is about the 5.8 volt equipotential. This wire is about the 9.9 .9 volt equipotential. And this wire is the 12 volt equipotential. Now to measure the potential's differences across each resistance, we can probe them directly. I'm getting about a 2 volt drop across that one, about a 4 volt drop across this one, and about a 5.8 volt drop across this one. Now there are some questions in the instructions that you need to answer. So be sure and record those values. Uh, name the resistors. This is a 1 kilo ohm resistor. This is a 2 kilo ohm resistor. This is a 3 kilo ohm resistor. So just call them R1, R2, and R3. Record the absolute potentials of the wires and then record the differences across each resistor. Now, again, same as we did with the parallel circuit, we want to measure current in this circuit. So, to measure current, we want to get these two probes safely in one hand. Move the input to the milliamp input. We switch to the milliamp scale select the two decimal point scale. Now, let's measure the current in this wire. To do that, I'm going to break it right there and put the meter in the gap, close the gap. I'm getting 1.92 milliamps through this wire. And of course, I was also at the end of this resistor so I've got 1.92 milliamps in this resistor. What about this wire here? Well, you probably already have this figured out. There's 1.92 milliamps in this wire. And 1.92 milliamps in this wire. and 1.92 milliamps in this wire. So the distinguishing factor between series and parallel essentially is that in series 
all the components have the same current. In parallel, all the components have the same voltage.